Hey guys, this is Michael Ostrich and I'm gonna do some photography 101 and I'm gonna teach you the exposure triangle which allows you to get a better understanding of how your camera works and by understanding how your camera works with its three basic core functions of aperture control, shutter speed control, and ISO control, I can step your photography game up just a little bit more than basically just using a basic point and shoot camera. So let's get started, shall we? So if you've never seen the exposure triangle, it looks something like this. You have a triangle that says aperture, ISO, and shutter speed, and in its center you have exposure. This is because a camera works on these three principles to control something called light. So light enters the camera through the lens, goes past the shutter, and goes right onto the sensor. Unless you have a film camera, then it does everything exactly the same, except for instead of a sensor, you have film. And with light, everything controls how bright or dark something is in an image. When you control the aperture, when you open it and close it, you let in more or less light. When you get the shutter speed, how fast that shutter goes, depends on how much light is actually hitting that sensor at that particular amount of time. Or with how sensitive you make your ISO, again, with light. But each element of that exposure triangle changes how your photo looks. Like aperture controls your depth of field, shutter speed controls motion blur, and ISO controls noise. But we're going to go into more details on each individual topic right now, starting with aperture. So your aperture is inside your lens. It's a series of blades that allow the aperture to open and close. And what that does is it controlling the amount of light that passes through the lens to your sensor or film. And the primary purpose of your aperture is to do not only that, but also control your depth of field. So when your aperture is wide open, you're allowing more light to hit that sensor, but you're also creating a shallow depth of field. So everything that's in focus in front of your focus subject and everything behind is generally going to be blurred out. But when you close down your aperture, your depth of field is getting deeper. You're also letting in less light. So when your depth of field is getting deeper, what you're doing is that you're sharpening the area around your focus subject. So in practice, when you're doing portrait photography, what you want to do is you want to have a shallow depth of field keep your subject in focus, but the background kind of blurred out, keep making your subject pop out. But when you're doing landscape photography, you want to do the exact opposite. You want to have a deeper depth of field. So everything in your scenery is going to be nice and focused. The hardest part to remember about aperture is the numbering system because you're kind of working in backwards. A smaller number means a wider aperture and a larger number means a smaller aperture. So if you can remember that, you're really good and you're, you're actually really good to go. So let's move on to shutter speed. With shutter speed, you're controlling how fast the shutter opens and closes or turns on and off, depending what kind of uh, shutter you have. If you have a DSLR like this, you have a mechanical shutter. It's essentially, it's just a metal plate that moves up and down really quickly. With an electronic shutter, you're just turning on and off a sensor really quickly. But in a mechanical shutter like this, your sensor is always on when your camera's on. All it's doing is, is opening and closing that shutter, help bringing in light to touch the sensor to create your exposure. So how shutter speed works is that it works in seconds. So when you see numbers like one one thousandth, that is gonna, your shutter is open for literally one one thousandth of a second. You can bring your shutter down to one second and when you press your shutter release, your shutter is gonna be open for that whole second. But the purpose of a shutter is to block light. So when you open up your shutter, you're letting in light to touch your sensor. The more light at a current amount of time, the brighter your exposure is gonna be. The less amount of time, the darker your image is going to be. But the secondary purpose of controlling the speed of your shutter is to control the amount of motion blur. I have here two photos of a rubber duck. 
one in motion. Oh, actually both are in motion, but taken at different types of shutter speeds. So the first one is at a low shutter speed. You can see the trail of motion blur behind the subject. So you can see at the point that the shutter opened and at the point the shutter closed. So at the point of the, uh, where the shutter opened is where the blur starts. Where the shutter closes is where the blur ends. When we go to the next image where I have a faster shutter speed, you can see that that same duck in motion is actually frozen in time. And that's the cool part about shutter speed and controlling its speed. Because if you're doing landscape photography and say you see a river water, you can make that water appear frozen in time or look like a cascading, you know, stream of smoke. If you're doing portrait photography, you can have someone be frozen in time, nice, crisp and clear. Or if they're spinning around in circles, you can make them kind of like a silhouetted blur. It's, and it gives you a very cool creative touch with some of your photos depending on what you're trying to do so that is the general synopsis of how shutter speeds work so let's move on to iso so with iso it is your camera's uh, sensors uh, sensitivity to light same thing when it comes to film with film iso which is what i have right here it says 800 that's the sensitivity of your film. It tells you how much light is actually gonna need to develop an image on that sensor or your film. The higher number, the more sensitive your sensor is or your film is, meaning that it needs less light. The lower the number, the less sensitive your sensory film is, the more light is gonna be required to develop an image. However, there is a caveat. The higher number, the more noise that sensor or film is going to generate. The lower number, the no noise or very little noise that film or sensor is going to generate. So that is something important to keep in mind. A very easy concept to remember is what I'm about to show you is what you can do is take a series of photos at different ISO levels. So you can see here I start off on the low and I'm going all the way up to my maximum ISO for my Nikon D850. This allows you to get a benchmark on your ISO, so you can get an idea of how much noise is acceptable to you on what the photo is gonna look like. I mean, you can do a lot in post to where you can get rid of a lot of that noise with uh, noise removal software such as in Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop, but you are losing detail with the more noise you are generating. And unfortunately that's detail you can never recover. But if you do this benchmark, it allows you to understand how far your camera can go. And every camera is different. The camera I'm using in this video as a demonstration a lot is my Canon, uh, yeah, Canon T1i Rebel. It's a nine year old camera. It's ISO is nowhere in comparison to the quality to this uh, D850 that I'm recording this video with. Here I can have maybe up to a thousand to two thousand before I start seeing very noticeable grain. The Nikon I can go all the way up to eight thousand, even up into ten thousands before it's unacceptable. But it's also depending on what I'm taking a photo of. If you're taking a photo of something bright, you might not even notice at all. If you're taking a photo of something dark, such as anything with a dark background, that noise is going to be much more noticeable than what's going to be in the bright. So that's something to keep an eye with. So what does ISO, shutter speed, and aperture all have in common when it comes to interacting with each other? Well, what you can do is that if you're having exposure issues, something is too dark or too light, you can simply just increase your ISO or decrease it while keeping your aperture or shutter speed and you can just keep the effects that you want but all you're doing is maybe potentially increasing the grain in your image that you can probably remove later on or decrease it. And it just changes how bright your images are gonna be. You can also do the same thing with shutter speed and aperture. If you wanna keep your ISO at a certain level, just increase or decrease your shutter speed if you're not worried about motion blur and you can increase your exposure. With your aperture, if you're not worrying about depth of field in your current image, but you're worrying about motion blur, just increase or decrease your aperture, but you can keep your ISO the same and your shutter speed the same. 
It's a delicate balance between the three that creates your final exposed image. And it's the, and it's the key between those three that allow you to create nice images such as the ones I'm showing you right now. This is all because of the balance between shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. And with practice, you can get the hang of this. It just, that's the hardest thing is that you can take all the academic knowledge you can get, but the main key thing is practice. And that's the only thing I can suggest. So take what you learn right now, go out there with the camera and start practicing. Start trying out different exposures with shutter speeds and apertures and ISOs and see what you can come up with. And then post it somewhere like on Reddit or Facebook, get feedback from your peers and see what your work is doing. Because the only way you're gonna get better is simply practicing. So, hope you learned something. And I'll see you next time.